Hello friends, this video on microbes and human welfare part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Microbes and household products Microbes and industrial products Microbes and sewage treatment Microbes and production of biogas Microbes as biocontrol agents and microbes as biofertilizers. So this lesson is all about microbes which are there in the advantage or in the benefit of human beings. So microbes and human welfare. Now by now we all have studied a lot about the microorganisms. So whether you talk about the bacteria, fungi, protozoa, you talk about uh, the, the tiny organisms like yeast, viruses, we all know by now that whenever you think of a microorganism, it is going to cause us some harm in one or the other form. Well, either, either it is going to cause some disease or uh, it is going to create some contamination in the food or water which we consume. So in some way or the other, they are going to harm us. So they cannot be beneficial to us. So most of us think it that way. But in this lesson, we will see that how so many microbes are there which are extremely useful to us. So that is what we are trying to see. But normally what comes to our mind is microbes can only make us ill. Because most of the microorganisms like the different bacteria, fungi, viruses, they are all known for causing diseases. Many of them are pathogens and some of them cause very deadly diseases. So we, we discussed in one of our previous lessons where we spoke about all the infectious and non-infectious diseases. Like we spoke about typhoid, malaria, uh, diphtheria, AIDS and we saw that all of them involved some or the other pathogen. So microbes cause a large number of diseases not only in animals but also in plants. In plants also if you see there are so many diseases which takes place in different types of plants. So they are also caused by various microorganisms. So sometimes our stomach get upset. Why? Because some of the bacteria maybe which would have gone inside our body through the food or the water which we have consumed and then since they are parting in our intestine so we are suffering from a stomach ache or we are suffering from a digestion problem. So that means there are so many problems which are caused by microorganisms. So now when we talk about microbes, they actually have a huge diversity. So they are seen in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some of them are spherical, some of them are cylindrical, some are extremely tiny, some are little bigger than the others. So their sizes and shapes are like they come in a variety of sizes and shapes. If you talk about the location where they are found, again they are found in, a, in many different types of location. For example, they are found in the soil, they are found on the surface of the soil as well as deep inside the soil. They are also found in water. They are also found in air. So actually speaking, when you cover air, water, soil, so you are actually trying to cover almost all the you know, places. In fact, they can also survive in extreme temperatures. Some of the microbes can survive even at temperatures as high as 100 degrees Celsius. Some can even survive at extremely low temperatures, maybe even in the snow covered areas also you can find microorganisms. Some can tolerate highly acidic environment while some others can tolerate highly basic environment. So different microbes require or they survive in different types of environment and that is why uh, in general microbes can be found in all types of location. They are even found inside the body of other animals as we saw this one where you actually see the microorganisms like bacteria uh, which are parting inside our intestine. So they actually live inside the body of human beings. So not only human beings, they live inside the body of many plants, many other animals as well. So that means the entire group of microbes they are extremely diverse in terms of their shape size as well as in terms of the location where they are found 
They are also found inside plants as I said just now. Now the question is can microbes ever be helpful because whenever we talk about microbes we are like kind of scared thinking about the term microbes because we feel that they are only capable of causing diseases. They are only capable of causing us harm. But is that the case always? Is there any chance that they can be helpful as well? Yes, of course. Several microbes are also useful to human beings in many different ways. So in this lesson, we are going to focus on the different ways by which these microbes are going to be helpful to us. So we are only going to look at the brighter side of microbes. So we are going to see what are those microbes which help us and how do they help us. So where do microbes help? Now there are many different areas where they are helpful for example in household products in, it, it helps the microbes help us in preparing many household products like curd cheese uh, bakery items like bread cake so there are so many things which in which preparation microbes play a very important role industrial products like uh, the alcoholic drinks, the beverages, whether it is beer, wine or whatever. Uh, it also helps in preparation of antibiotics. That is so interesting, right? We all know that antibiotics are those chemicals which help to kill disease-causing bacteria. We saw that when persons suffer from diseases like typhoid, which are caused by bacterial infection, they are treated by antibiotic medication. So antibiotics are those medicines which are capable of killing disease causing microbes. But the interesting fact is that these antibiotics are prepared from microbes. So there are one set of microbes which help in preparing antibiotics whereas there are other set of disease causing microbes which needs to be killed by these antibiotics. Interesting right? They also help in the preparation of several enzymes and acids. They are extremely helpful in sewage treatment. So when I say sewage treatment, it is what is sewage basically. So sewage is nothing but the waste water, water which carries all the wastes along with it. So that kind of water needs to be uh, removed from the environment in order to ensure a healthy and clean living for the living organisms. Now this sewage needs to be treated before it is disposed because proper disposal of sewage is very important. So we will discuss it in detail and we will see that in this sewage treatment process microbes play a very important role. Biogas production. So what is biogas? Biogas which is often termed as gober gas. You would have studied about this in your junior classes. So biogas is a renewable sources of energy which can be utilized for different purposes like for cooking or for lightning. So this biogas production is also done with the help of microbes. Control of pests and diseases like what do we normally do to kill pests or diseases, pests or insects which cause harm to the plants or the crops. So what do we do? So mostly people use the insecticides or the pesticides. They are the chemicals which are extremely toxic. So they not only kill the pests or the disease causing insects, they also cause harm to the plant itself. They also cause harm to other organisms which feed on those plants. So the usage of these kind of chemical pesticides and insecticides has a lot of harmful effects. So in order to uh, minimize the use of these chemical uh, insecticides and pesticides, there are something called biofertilizers where the living organisms itself can help to control various pests and disease causing insects. So we will discuss it in detail. So as I said, biofertilizers. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.